Welcome to the next section of our test project course. And in this section we'll be talking about working with test data and handling test runs. Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from executeautomation.com and in this video we'll be talking about working with parameters in test project. Parameters. Test projects support two types of parameters input parameters and output parameters. Input parameters are used to input certain values to the test steps during runtime. This value can be either a preset value or it can be a value from a CSV file. So we'll discuss about setting a value from a CSV file in our next video of this section. But as of now, stay informed that we can input two types of value within this input parameter. And there is another kind of parameter type in test project which is nothing but output parameters. Well, output parameter as it names, it is used to out certain values from a particular test case to other test cases. So we can use the values from one test case to another test case as an input so that we can chain the test cases to run the test in a sequential order or the order that you like. So this is very, very helpful to execute multiple test cases interlinking with each other and run the test. Again, we'll discuss about this output parameter concept alone in our upcoming videos of this course. But as of now, since we have not covered some of the topics which makes the output parameters discussion more sensible, I have not covered the output parameter in this particular video. All right, so let's quickly see everything in action and understand how things work. So for that, I'm gonna flip to Chrome browser. All right, so this is my test project account and I have already logged in. So I'm gonna go to the exit automation test once again, and then I'm gonna go to the iOS test. And once again, this is the same iOS test that we executed before in our previous sections of this course. And I'm gonna run my iOS test in my Windows operating system. As you can see, this is my Windows machine. So I'm gonna hit this record button so that it will start connecting my iPhone and it is gonna connect my YouTube application to run the test. So this time our scenario is this. We are going to run an test within our YouTube application and then we're gonna see how we can enter multiple different value within this particular text box, the search text box that we have. As you can see our test, it actually clicks subscription, inbox, and library, trending, and home, and then it search for the execute automation in the search text box. So let me quickly run this test and I'll show you what it's gonna do. As you can see, it opened the application. And then it should search execute automation there there we go and then the test has got start so this is what it is doing so our quest is to search for different kinds of value into this particular uh, text box and then perform certain operation again i'm saying perform certain operation here as you can see as of now our test is currently just searching for a value but it is not clicking any one of the elements here so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to record as if like it's gonna click the first element of the uh, search text box over there or the search result over there. And let's quickly see what is the identifier it has used to identify the first element. So if I just do an edit here, you can see that it is actually using the accessibility ID and it is clicking the button execute automation. But what if we're gonna search for any other element, something like this time we have searched execute automation, but next time, if we search for Selenium or Code.UI or Test Project or Appium, something like that, this particular button is not gonna be valid. So if you understand what I'm saying, so if I click this, uh, close this guy, uh, you can see this particular element is coming here. So if I do a find, you can see it is finding this particular value. But now if I want to find this particular element, instead of using this particular accessibility ID, what I can do is I can just hover here. I can do double shift. I can go for the attribute. And this is the X path which I'm looking for. So I can just use this locator. Let me do an evaluate. You can see that this is still legal. So I'm just gonna copy this guy. 
and I will say select first element and I'm going to use the X path and I'm going to paste this particular value and if we do a find it is searching for the value and this time it has not hard coded the execute automation elsewhere in this particular X path so which is kind of legal so I'm just going to save this guy so you can see that this is working fine uh, let me delete this particular step this is accidentally recorded so I'm going to delete it this way you can see that now I can just run the test so let's see what's going to happen you should open the YouTube app there you go cool so it's working so this is the complete test for now so let's say I want to change the value like instead of exit automation I want to input something like selenium or test project or something like that so if I want to do that I can just click this particular step here which is responsible for entering the keys exit automation so instead of this if I want to enter some other value I can either type a value here something like selenium as you can see this is kind of parameterized right now and it's like a hard-coded parameterizing of the value but this is not exactly what the input parameter is all about rather what you can do is if I hit this plus button here do you see there is something called as no found parameters in the current test you can add a new parameter if you go to this plus button here so I can click that and then I can enter some value here something like YouTube search text and then I can enter a value something like selenium and then I can make this particular parameter either as a project level or a test level so if I make this as a project level then what I can do is this particular parameter I can use across my exit automation test project if I make this as a test level then it is going to be applicable only for this specific test it will not be applicable to my whole exit automation project right so I'm just going to add this to be a test level you can see it is finding it here and you can see there is a highlighting of this particular YouTube search so I'm just going to delete it oops I'm just going to select this guy you can see this time it has been changed from selenium to this particular value but actually for this particular parameter the input parameter the value is selenium right so I can just hit this tick mark you can see if I save this from exit automation this particular stuff will change into YouTube search text right and now if I run this particular test you can see that it is going to enter the value selenium in it but next time if I want to change this particular parameter let's say if I want to change this particular parameter into something like Appium or test project that particular value will also come in so let's see what's going to happen so it should select search selenium and it should select the first value out from this and you can see that it has chosen the first value that's really cool that's why I made this selecting the first element as a generic type so I can select this one and I can hit this plus and maybe I can edit this particular value from selenium to test project and I can edit it and I can hit this tick button I can save it And now if I run this test, let's see what's going to happen. And you can see that it has searched for test project and it has selected the first value from there. That's really, really cool. So this is how we can do the input parameters. Well, the real power of input parameter is not just parameterizing by entering some value in there. The real power will be exposed while we start using with the CSV file. So this will be talking in our next video. So stay tuned for our next video to see how we can leverage the power of CSV file and use that as an input parameter within this particular test. So that's it guys. Thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.